It is just after the season's midway point, and the New York Mets are 43-50. and 50. Definitely not the spot they want to find themselves in, especially coming after their 101-win season in 2022. Coming into the season, the Mets made a plethora of moves, including signing three-time Cy Young winner Justin Verlander, Japanese phenom Kodai Senga, and various other moves, but they have not panned out the way they thought it would. The starting pitching has been bad, to say the least, the offense has been inconsistent, and age has definitely been a factor in the Mets' fall. This brings up the question that many fans have been asking. Should the 2023 New York Mets be buyers or sellers at the trade deadline? My name is Anthony Bartiromo, and I am one of the New York Mets beat reporters for WFV Sports. And now I'm here to give you my thoughts and analysis of the situation. To start, we have to discuss the Mets' current situation in accordance with the playoffs. As mentioned before, they have a 43-50 and 50 record. While the division may be out of reach, they are still eight and a half games back out of a wild card spot. This may seem like an uphill battle, but the Mets do have some bright spots coming out of the break. Two Franciscos, Francisco Lindor and Francisco Alvarez, are in the midst of their best month of the season. Alvarez had a hot streak entering the All-Star break, homering in five of seven games, and has a 343, 395, 771 slash line in July thus far. If the Mets want to play in October, he will certainly be a big part. Lindor, on the other hand, has been hot since June, posting a 316, 422, 684 slash line in July. If the Mets do contend this season, they will need consistency from both of these players as their OPSs have fluctuated month by month. Now I want to talk about the pitching. The Mets came into the season expecting to have one of the best rotations in the league, but that could not be further from the truth. The Mets have a starting pitching ERA of 454, which is good for 20th in the league. This is largely due to their 1-2 of Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer simply not living up to expectations. While Verlander was injured for the first month of the season, he struggled once coming back, posting a 4.8 ERA in 30 innings pitched in May. His last start against the Dodgers wasn't good either, as he threw five innings with three earned runs. His ERA for the season is now up to 3.72, not what you want from your reigning Cy Young winner. Scherzer, on the other hand, has struggled all year, posting a 3.99 ERA and a career-high 1.7 home runs per nine. Scherzer did look good, however, in his last start against the Dodgers, hurling seven scoreless with six strikeouts. The struggles of these pitchers lead Mets fans to ask the question, has their window of opportunity closed already, and should the Mets sell at the deadline? My answer to that question is yes. I think that the Mets should be sellers at the deadline. While I don't think the Mets' window of opportunity is completely closed, I do think their time is better spent preparing for next season. Most of the Mets' core is still under contract for next season, including Pete Alonso, Brandon Nimmo, and of course the rookies Brett Beatty and Francisco Alvarez. Now, there are a couple of players I want to highlight the Mets possibly trading. The first one is Tommy Pham. What an unexpected year Pham is having. A 271, 347, 476 slash line with an 823 OPS puts Matt first on the Mets currently for OPS. Pham has always been a guy who hits the ball as hard as anyone, and that has certainly been the true this year, as he is in the 96th percentile for average exit velocity. Pham's trade value is insanely high right now, and Mets could very well get MLB-ready prospects in return. Teams such as the Rangers, Yankees, or Astros could all very well use a corner outfielder power bat. The next player I want to highlight is Mark Canna. Similar to Pham, Canna is a veteran corner outfielder but gets on base more frequently than Pham. Canna is in the midst of a decent year right now with a 241, 340, 390 slash line, highlighted by his 10.8% walk rate and his clear career low 17% strike rate, strikeout rate. While his value isn't as high as Pham's right now, he has proven in the past to be a consistent on-base machine with some sneaky power. His 802 OPS from 2019 to 22 shows just that. The final player I want to mention is closer David Robertson. The veteran is having one of the best seasons of his career with a 2.06 ERA and 39.1 innings of work. Reliable bullpen arms are incredibly valued for contenders at the deadline, so the Mets could get a good haul for him. The Mets will also be getting the back their all-star closer Edwin Diaz next year, so it's not like the Mets will be without a closer next year. Not to mention, Robertson is on a one-year deal, so the Mets could potentially sign him again in the offseason. The 2023 Mets season has been a roller coaster thus far. Underperformance from key players has led to a disappointing first half for the Mets, where they question if they should be buyers or sellers at the trade deadline. My answer is that they should be sellers and prioritize next season. Focusing on the development of young players like Mark Vientos and Ronnie Mauricio could put the Mets in the spot to win in 2023. Those are my thoughts, but I want to hear yours in the comments section and on my Twitter at Aunt Bartiromo. Follow me for coverage all season long for WFEV Sports.